Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I want to go over what I would consider the nine basic principles of good data architecture. In the ever evolving field of data management, you know, the importance of having really strong foundations in your data architecture is crucial. And a well-designed data architecture not only supports better data management and analysis, but also gives you the basis you need to actually adapt to future needs and technologies in a modular manner. Because as we all know, the data sphere, the dataverse never really stops uh, changing. So what I'm going to try to illustrate within this video is the fundamental pr principles of good data architecture, each of which are tailored to enhance the reliability, scalability, and effectiveness of data-driven systems. Because at the end of the day, there's no point in working in data engineering if you're not actually driving business impact. So what I'm gonna do is go through these nine principles, share what I consider that you know overarching principle to be, describe it, and then I'll give you an example of how I see those world, there was real world uh, principles being applied, or sorry, those principles being applied in the real world. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. So the first principle that I wanna talk about is choose common components wisely. Uh, and this example here, which I'll get to in a second, um, is how Netflix actually applies this first principle to have Apache Kafka, a popular open source streaming software for real-time event monitoring, event processing, and really layering it throughout the business. Um, and the reason why they've done this is because Kafka's widespread adoption and community support make it a wise choice because it integrates with almost anything within the Netflix tech stack, which reduces both integration issues and costs. And this is because the first principle really revolves around, you need to make sure you're choosing your common components wi wisely, because it's foundational to creating an effective data architecture. Components that everyone in your business is gonna need to interact with should really be carefully considered, because if you choose the wrong component, you're just introducing friction across the entire organization. And so this kind of process involves selecting standardized, widely supported, and very versatile components that can seamlessly integrate with various pieces of your architecture. Um, and this approach really reduces complexity, lowers costs, and enhances the maintainability of the system versus having every team kind of develop their own foundation, having every team use different components to accomplish the same use case. And it fosters a community-driven approach to problem solving where common challenges across the business can be addressed with shared solutions rather than everyone working within silos. Now, the second principle I have for you is plan for failure. And I have kind of an example of what that might look like up here on the screen. But resilience is a critical aspect of data architecture. So planning for failure involves designing systems that are robust, robust enough to handle and recover from failures without significant disruption. And this means you need to implement redundancy, failover mechanisms, disaster recovery plans. And by anticipating your failure modes and what could possibly go wrong and then incorporating resilience in your data ar architecture, organizations can help ensure that data availability and business continuity uh, even in adverse scenarios when there's you know some kind of black swan event. You know, a good example of how you might want to plan for failure is think about AWS offering multiple availability zones within its regions. Businesses most of the time will deploy their applications across several availability zones to ensure that if one zone experiences a failure, the application can continue running in another zone without significant downtime. Now, my third principle is architect for scalability. Scalability is the ability of a data architecture to handle growth, whether it's in data volume, number of users, complexity of operations, without a drop in performance. And so architecting for scalability involves employing elastic resources, modular design, utilizing scalable technologies. And this principle ensures that architecture can expand or contract as needed, providing cost-effective performance and also accommodating future growth seamlessly. And the example I have of this up on the screen is Twitter. Twitter handles enormous amounts of data and sudden spikes in traffic during major events by employing a scalable architecture. And to achieve this, they use a combination of sharding and partitioning to distribute data and load evenly across systems, ensuring that these servers scale effectively as the number of tweets increase. So nice little real world example of that. Now, the fourth principle I have to talk about is that architecture is leadership. Google's leadership in adopting site reliability engineering practices has not only influenced its architectural decisions by allowing them to focus on reliability and scalability and having dedicated engineers for that, it, but this not only guides their technical strategies, but also sets an industry standard for designing robust large-scale systems. 
And this is because good architecture design, data architecture is not only about technical design. It also reflects leadership and vision. That's why I kind of want to talk about the example first, because this principle really emphasizes that architects should guide the organization towards strategic data practices, like bringing in SREs, promote best practices, and also ensure alignment between your business goals and your technical solutions. And don't just get lost in the weeds of the data side of things. Make sure that everything aligns to actual business purposes. And then also, leadership and architecture fosters a cult of culture, not cult, of innovation and also continuous improvement. Now, my fifth principle is a bit of a fun one, and that is ABA, always be architecting. Data environments are dynamic. They have new challenges and opportunities continuously emerging, and the principle of always be architecting advocates for ongoing evaluation and iterative improvement of the data architecture. By continually assessing and refining your architecture, organizations can adapt to technological advances and changing business needs and maintain relevance and efficiency in the face of those. And a real world example of that is how LinkedIn continually evolves its architecture to improve performance and manageability. One of these evolutions was the migration from a monolithic architecture to a more modular microservices architecture, enabling independent scaling and development of different functionalities within the platform. So never be satisfied with what you have. Always think about ways that you can continue to improve your systems. Now, my sixth principle is build loosely coupled systems. Make sure that all these systems that you're designing are designed in such a way that individual components or services interact with each other without tight, explicit dependencies. This kind of decoupling, you can see the example up on screen, allows parts of the system to be updated or replaced independently, which then enhances the flexibility and reduces the impact of any kind of changes. This also makes scaling much easier uh, and integrating new technologies easier as well because you don't need to integrate it directly to every existing piece of your architecture. And that then supports a more resilient and adaptable architecture, which makes it easier for you to add new systems, change systems out, uh, and more. Now, a real world example of this is how AWS or was developed as a set of loosely coupled systems where every system operates independently. This really allow, you know, allows developers to update one service without impacting others, and that facilitates you know, easier maintenance and faster innovation, which is why AWS is such the absolute giant it is, and we're, everyone uses cloud computing now, because it allows you to really spin up these loosely coupled components. Now, my sixth prin principle, or seventh actually, sorry, is to make reversible decisions. In a very fast paced world, such as data engineering, the ability to actually revert decisions is really important. Uh, this principle involves choosing strategies and technologies that allow for reversibility. By making reversible decisions, organizations can experiment with new approaches without making a long-term commitment, thereby fostering innovation and allowing quicker adaption to better solutions as they emerge. Um, and here on the screen, you can see Jeff Bezos' metric for analyzing decisions. Decision to make, is it reversible? Yes, decide quickly and act. No, think carefully and then act. Um, and that's what I think you should also kind of take into uh, into the top of your mind when you're approaching decisions. Um, just like how Spotify uses Google Cloud Platform for its modular cloud services. This means you know, Spotify can switch between different services, configurations, or even move to another cloud provider if necessary. Now, my eighth and second to last principle is to prioritize security. Make sure that whatever decision you're making, security is one of the number one things you're considering. Security is paramount any data architecture and prioritizing security involves integrating comprehensive security measures at all levels of your architecture from data acquisition to storage to access and this can include things like employing encryption secure access controls regular security audits and in general a secure architecture protects against data breaches and ensures compliance with regulatory requirements helps build the trust and also safeguard your organization's reputation and an example of this you know in practice is taking a proactive approach to security by implementing robust data pra encryption practices, multi-factor authentication, and having that take effect into every layer of your data architecture. And finally, my last but certainly not least uh, principle is to embrace financial operations. FinOps is a practice aimed at balancing financial efficiency with cloud spending, and embracing FinOps within data architecture means incorporating cost management strategies into the design and operation of data systems. 
And this includes things like selecting cost-effective resources, optimizing resource usage, and continuous financial monitoring to ensure that investments in data infrastructure deliver maximum value. Um, and that's really doing things like implementing granular tracking of cloud resources between different teams, and then attributing costs to specific projects, teams, and ensure efficient usage of resources and also better budget alignment which can align spending with actual outcomes and objectives. So you're not just throwing money away in the wind on things that aren't gonna work. Um, and so that's really all I have for you today. Just wanted to sh make a video showing uh, nine principles for uh, good data architecture. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope it helps you develop more robust and scalable systems. Have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.